Hey everyone, it's Tara. Welcome to A Loop Through A Loop. It has been two months since the last podcast and I wanted to come and hang out with you, catch you up on some making that has gone down. I don't have a whole lot of recently finished objects to show you because a lot of that was gift knitted. Um, but I do have a couple of accessories that I made for myself. I have my, oh no. It's by Gudrun Johnson. It's the hat that just came, Shetland Solstice, I think, hat. Um, and this was my birthday cast on, knit with yarn that I just had already. So this was my birthday cast on. I love it. It's all kind of crazy colors, I love them. I guess I shouldn't say crazy colors. I mean, colorful. And then I also made some cloud mitts, except that I just knit the tube. I didn't make them into actual mitts. And I don't know if I showed this last time or not because I didn't go back and watch last time, but I really like using these for just having to do all the things. If I need to push them down and use my full hands, I can. And if my hands get a little sweaty or something gets on them, it's not a big deal. And then if I get chilly, I can just pull them back up over my hands. Um, this is used um, with stash yarn. I took a Holst Garn. I want to say it was a super soft in a a little bit lighter than charcoal gray color. And I marled it with brushed alpaca that is actually in the color work of my sweater that I'm wearing. This is the pink velvet designed by Andrea Mowry. The main color is Frank Ochre by Malabrigo and then brushed alpaca. And I cannot remember who who dyed the colorway, which is a shame because it is quite beautiful, but I'm sure that I have it on my Ravelry page, which is linked in the description box. So that takes care of what I'm wearing and some things I've recently finished just to get it right out of the way without wasting any time. Um, in the meantime, um, you know, I got those things done you know, I got these done, I want to say, gosh, I think I had this done around my birthday, which is December 20th. And then these were done not too long after that. And then, you know, like I said, I made some things, but I've given them away. So I don't have that to show you. I kind of feel like my knitting goes through spurts or maybe it's just like when I'm feeling creative and want to make something. Um, I had this urge, like I have to get out my sewing machine and, and I need to, I need to sew something with my sewing machine. <laughs> so I did that. I made a pair of pajama pants and then I made, um, a new needle case, which maybe I'll show another time. Um, it's downstairs at the moment, so I apologize for not having it with me. Um, but sewing is not as rejuvenating and relaxing for me as knitting can be. So I only did the sewing in short bursts. Um, I was able to get some yarn in order. I'm, back here on my shelves. I have some yarn already in bags. So like I did some organizing and getting ready for upcoming projects that I want to work on. And I think what I would like to do is to keep the promise to myself that these are the things that I will work on and give myself room to, if I want to play around with something. I can 
throw it in there. But, you know, I have, I have yarn with definite patterns or designs already in mind that I would really like to see come to fruition. And of course, there's always lots of yarn to play with. <laughs> All my leftovers. So that takes care of all of that. What I'm currently working on is what has really been on my needles for the longest period of time. They're not quick knits. I have three sweaters <laughs> because that seemed like, why not? Why wouldn't I? Um, I go through and clean out my clothes pretty regularly. I want to say in the fall and in the spring. I think those are the two main seasons. Fall and spring are when I go through and I clean out my clothes. And I've done this for as many years that I can't even remember when I started. The first time I ever did it, when I went through and cleaned out all of my clothes, that includes clothes, shoes, accessories, you know, anything that you would put on your person. The first time I did it, I got rid of a ton of stuff. There were so many things in my closet that I really just needed to let go of. And then what I found is as the years have passed, um, the, the amount of things that I part with kind of get smaller, but there is always something that I'm like, okay, this season, the season for this garment has passed. I'm past moving it along. So I also do that with my knitwear. I don't hold on to everything that I make. I know that when I make it, not everything is made for me to keep. And I've, I know I've talked about this before, that um, sometimes when I make something, it's for me to keep, like this sweater would be an example. My socks, you know, that's an example. I guess that's something I'm wearing that I didn't, I didn't mention. Um, this is a Summerly design, I can't remember. They're like the party socks. I can't remember the exact name. I've gotten quite, um, I've gotten, quite poor at remembering things as far as the pattern and like a yarn dyer's name or stuff like that. I, I, I feel bad about that. Um, but I do have it documented on Ravelry. So anyway, um, so I do that with my knits as well. Now the problem is, that when it comes time to want to wear the knits and then I realize I love what I have kept and I enjoy wearing what I have kept, but sometimes I'm like, oh man, none of these really go with the weather or the occasion that I have going on. So, that's probably why I decided I needed, I need sweaters <laughs> because I just do. Um, before we get into the sweaters, I'm just going to mention really quick. I'm still working on my half wrap. <laughs> I debated whether even to show this because I don't really know how much, um, progress I made that I've made since I shown this. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, once I, one of my sweaters that's a test knit is finished. This is going to get some more love because I'm so close to being done. Like, I'm so close. I'm so close. I just have this much more to go. So it would be a shame not to finish it. Um, and so I just wanted to share with that. I have made progress on it. Like I said, this is just a short term, short term, <laughs> long term um, love. And this is where I put any pins that I have. I don't have, this is kind of like, so this gift, this bag was a gift. And what I like to do is put my treasures on here. 
So I have a pin from my dad. I have a crochet heart. That means a lot to me. And then from trips that I've gone, just little treasures. They just make me happy. There's not very many of them. And also what I did, since this is a felted bag, this feels like this is a tangent. Just hang on with me. I put a couple of safety pins. Can we see that okay? So I have a couple of safety pins on there. So then all I have to do is open the safety pin and there's some stitch markers already on there. I'm sure I didn't come up with that idea, but I think it's a good one. <laughs> Anyway, um, speaking of my test knit, I am again test knitting for Florence Sperling and this time I'm test knitting the Rosecroft pullover. And I just finished, I just finished binding off the bottom this morning. And it's all over color work. Now in, the, in her pattern, these colors that I have for the body would be switched. What I did is I ended up making green the dominant color just because I wasn't sure how much of the blue I had, if it was going to be enough. And uh, it wasn't really right. I wasn't planning on ordering any more yarn at the time. Since then, I did actually order one more skein of that since I was getting some other yarn. Um, but I went ahead and kept it because I do enjoy it. I like the change of it going to the green. So I just have to pick up and do both sleeves. I don't mind knitting sleeves. The I know that for some people, um, sleeves are just not fun at all. Uh, for me, the part of a garment that I dislike the most is actually the body. <laughs> so the body's done. Praise God. I can move on to the sleeve. Once I figure out the first sleeve, the second sleeve practically knits itself. Um, one thing I am going to do, I had modified this neckline to make it look like this, but I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it. Um, I have to kind of, I need to finish the sleeves and then think about it because I just think now that I have that more of the blue color, I think I would like to take, go ahead and just take this off and then knit the collar, just a simple one by one collar and not all of this silliness up here. It, it just seems, I like the idea of the collar, but the collar with the rest of it, it just doesn't quite have the right balance so, eh. I think I'm going to change it. I, not that I think. I, I know I will change it. And, and really, okay, I'm th literally thinking through this in real time right now. I probably should re-knit the collar right now. Like, that should be the next thing I do before I do the sleeves because a collar can affect where, like, your sleeve length depending on how broad or tight, you know, depending on the fit of the collar affects the sleeves. Anyway, that's something to think about. Um, let's just do this one. This sweater, I haven't even finished the yoke yet. And I, I which is a shame because this, out of the three sweaters, this is the one that I cast on first. I had to put my test knit on hold because there were some kinks in the pattern that um, they were working on. And so I thought, okay, well, since I have to put that to the side, I'm going to start this sweater. And what I have is Andrea Mowry's uh, Wool and Honey, which, oh, oh. I love this might be my all time favorite like sweater design, like design of a sweater. It's just so good. And I have made this once before. Um, I've made it before in Rowan Alpaca Classic Soft Satin, my favorite yarn. And sadly, I wasn't paying attention when I was doing laundry one day and it ended up 
in the washer and shrunk so I could no longer wear it. Uh, well, that's a lie. I could fit into it, but it didn't fit me the way that it should have. So I parted with it. And so now I'm re-knitting it. This is in Holst Garn Super Soft Jasper, which is this beautiful dark purple. Mm. I love this. I love this. <laughs> Did I tell you I love this? And of just a yarn that from a distance is one color, but when you get up close, you can see all of the multicolors that are in it. Like, oh, like there's blue and deep red and I think like a yellow and oh. It's just so good. It's so good. I don't know. I don't. I don't know that my phone camera can really pick that up, but just trust. It's so good. It's so good. Um, I mean, I don't, I, I guess I should just go ahead and say most of what I've been knitting with is, is holst coast or super soft um, because I think that it allows me to um, work with something that I'm familiar with and also play in a way that uh, like I, it just makes me comfortable. The money is not super crazy expensive. Like I feel like I'm not, I don't have any buyer's remorse, I guess. Long story short, I don't have any buyer's remorse about buying it. It goes a long way. It's just, I like it. Okay. So if you're, tr if you're looking for yarn diversity, um, I, I do not have that to offer you. All I have to offer you is playing with color and trying different patterns and textures and marling yarns together, which this is part of why I really love working with Holst is that I can take um, their Coast and super soft and I can marl them together and I can play with color theory and learn what happens when things are mixed together and what I like and what I don't like, what's pretty, what's ugly and muddy and that's really fun for me. Okay, so the last thing that I'm gonna show you that I have been working on um, is yarn that I had frogged from a previous sweater that I enjoyed wearing. There was absolutely nothing wrong with the project or the garment itself, other than I was just like, mm, I think it's time is done. I would like to use that yarn to make something else. And I think I could do a better job. <laughs> That's, you know. So a while back, I had knit a self-drafted, self-designed sweater that was kind of like a cow neck. It had raglan shaping with eyelets. And then at the bottom, it had some lace patterning and then it just had some straight sleeves. I loved it. Felt like a sweatshirt, wore it to church several times. Like it was a nice sweater I could wear to church and then also just lounge around the house in. Well, I frogged it cause I was just, <laughs> why not? My husband, <laughs> It was like, what are you doing? And I was like, well, I want to use the yarn to make something else. <laughs> he goes, just buy new yarn. <laughs> I was like, but I, but I want this yarn. <laughs> I already have this one. So I have frogged it. And what I did is I just wanted to play. I was like, okay, what can I do with this yarn? So I went in my Ravelry library and I found 
Stagecoach by Caitlin Hunter. And I don't know why I bought this pattern. I like Caitlin Hunter's patterns. I think they're very beautiful and I'm attracted to them. And you know, I, uh, I admire her artistry as far as her designs. But Stagecoach is not one of her more popular designs. In fact, it's one of those that I don't, I don't think I really would have bought it, except I think she was having a birthday sale. And when she had a birthday sale, and it wasn't this recent one, this was a while ago. <laughs> when she had the birthday sale, I was just like, oh, I'll just get, might as well get all these different patterns. I don't shop that way anymore, but back then I did. And for some reason I thought, yeah, I'll, I'm going to get stagecoach, whatever. And then I never knit it because I could never figure out how do I want to use the colors in this. And it kind of, there's kind of like this wish to me, it looks like a wishbone. Like it's just kind of, uh, not really me. But, huzzah, what I have done is I thought, okay, since I'm just playing and this is just for fun, what if I just use it to play with color? So I have. So the main color is, this is Holst Coast in Powder and Ivory. Huh? I remembered that. And then... All of the color work are two strands marled. Now I can't tell you every single color that's in here because it's just whatever I had. I literally just have, I have my yarn separated into colors since most, like my yarn is mostly just all fingering weight yarn. So I had different colors of yarn. Um, organized into different gallon Ziploc bags. And I would think, okay, I wanna know if I start with kind of this combination of blues and it goes into greens or, you know, I just played. Like an artist would play with paint. That's how I played with the color of the yarn. So what I noticed is that you know, up at the top, it's pretty clear, you know, very pretty. And then it kind of gets muddy and murky here. It's not necessarily pretty, but I like it. It's almost like if all of the color work, maybe if I hold it this way, like, if all of the colors, if all of it was just so pretty, that would be nice. But I think for me, when I look at it, because I kind of have this section of like murky, muddy, the it just makes the pretty parts more pretty, I guess. <laughs> like there's gratitude for like, the parts that did turn out nice that I do really like. And also it's just learning how do I play with color? So, I mean, it really was just, let me try this and then, okay, I'll try that. And if it's ugly, I'm going to go ahead and keep it in. And I did. <laughs> and this is, this is what we have. Like you can't even really, I don't know. We'll see what happens after I block, wet block it. What happens with it? But I like it. You know, I go on Pinterest and I see these sweaters by designers that are like hundreds or thousands of dollars. And I look at them and I'm like, I, I think I could make that. And sometimes I look at it and I think, well, if somebody thought that <laughs> was worth that much money, I'm okay. I'll just, I'm okay to do whatever I want. <laughs> you know, I know I'm not the only one. 
I know I'm not the only one that has walked into a store and thought, someone designed that and someone said, okay, let's make it and sell it to people. And it's ugly. Just saying. I'm just saying. We can make whatever we want for ourselves and it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. Okay, so I finished the yolk and then I thought, okay, I do not want to just knit stocking it in the round because I, I will lose steam that way. So I went to my Nora Gone cable source book and just picked out <laughs> um, a cable pattern in her book. It was literally, there was, there was math involved, I will say. I had to take into account the amount of stitches I had. And then because it was a cabling pattern, um, like account for differences in gauge between the color work and the cabling. Now, is it all going to block out and look fine when I'm done? I don't know. It might, it might look completely horrendous. And if it does, then that's okay because I can just reuse whatever yarn I want to, or if I wanted to, I could cut the color work into like little coasters or something. I don't know, but that's kind of what's fun about knitting anyway. Excuse my allergies. So I, I have a while to go on the body before I'm done with this. I don't do the cropped thing. I'm almost six foot tall and I'm just, for me, I'm just over everything being cropped. Like, can we just, can we just be done with that? Okay. Like if you want to show your tummy, that's cool. I don't have a problem with that. I don't. Can I get, you know, anyone can crop a shirt. You just cut it. You can't necessarily just add four inches. You know what I mean? Oh, sorry. I digress. I, I was at the store the other day and I was looking at some shirts, just basics like tees and tanks, you know, and I was like, Oh, I like this. And I hold it up and I'm like, half, there's half a shirt there. And so anyway, I digress. So this is what we have. So we're working on, um, since I just finished the body of this before I fix the neckline, I think I'm just going to work on this for a little bit. Give myself a bit of a break. Um, or I might work on the half wrap, just some good old garter, you know, just kind of ease into it. So I'm assuming that I have to get at least one sleeve done by the end of the month on this for the test knit before the test knitting period ends. But I'm suspecting in February, I will get this done since I just have to do a collar and two sleeves. And I would like to get one of my other whips finished. I don't think that's bad. Is that an attainable goal? We'll see. We'll see. You know, you know what I wouldn't pick? I wouldn't pick my wool and honey because that has, that needs the most work. So finish this and then choose either my stage coach or my half wrap and pick, pick one of those to get finished before I decide I can cast anything else on, but okay. That's everything. I feel like I just sat down and went, Bleh. 